Welcome back guys and girls, today we're having a team group SSD for review and uh, it's been almost, I think almost six months since I covered anything from team group actually. Unfortunate, but here we go today with team group Steamforce G50, this is PCIe Gen 4 x 4 1TB SSD. So what's it all about, okay, this is a single sided SSD, it has 1TB but you can also choose from 2 terabyte and 512 gigabytes. There's also other versions. So you have the G70, G50 Pro and G70 Pro as well, which also you can choose with the heatsink. This is great if you're aiming something from for PlayStation 5, if you want to upgrade, if you need to upgrade. Shame it doesn't have more capacity because that will be quite outstanding. But what's up with the PCIe Gen 4 and not having full speeds? Well, basically, this one goes up to 5,000 megabytes per second read. And honestly, in 2024, when we're talking about Gen 4 SSDs, I would actually, you know, expect to have full grown speeds at 7,400 megabytes, 7,500 megabytes, or at least 7,000 megabytes, which would be quite outstanding. The write speed can go at 6,000 and above. But taking into consideration that I don't know why are they doing not in general team group, but everybody's doing like Gen 4 SSDs and then you have speeds that are like 1500 megabytes above Gen 3. So that really doesn't make any sense. But altogether, the speeds are there. The terminals, well, if you take into consideration the terminals, and I'll get to those when we do the benchmarks, when you take into consideration the terminals and uh, for Gen 4, and then you see how low they are on specifically on this SSD. It doesn't have to do anything with the graphene. It doesn't have to do anything with the passive heatsink on the motherboard. It does have a bit, but it doesn't have full speeds of Gen 4. And logically, it won't go up with the thermals. So yeah, that's the thing that I wanted to say right on front to give you some idea what I expect in the future. Having Gen 4 SSDs with full grown speeds and not having a half of the speeds or well not basically half but you know what i'm trying to say so as you can see right here single sided you get the graphene uh, passive heatsink here this is a slim sort of a line that you sticker that you place on the chips on top and it helps with heat dissipation as you already seen in the past team group reviews this is how it's done and from their side and i think some other brands do it also as well but unfortunately, this this SSD right here has three chips. So you have one controller and you have two chips on top. So you'll actually have a bit of a wobbliness when we're talking about the graphene sticker on top. It's something that it is, but you'll place that under the heatsink and you won't even notice the wobbliness of, um, of it. It's just simple as it is. If it had like two more chips, then it would most likely be a higher capacity but regardless of that so let's break it down with some specs what they stated is uh it goes read speed go up to 5000 megabytes and write speed go up to 4800 megabytes per second the good thing about this one particular is that it has five year warranty now if we go more into details uh, it supports ldbc supports trim slc caching where the g50 pro has slc caching and dram caching as well 3D NAND flash, we already know that, wear leveling, and when we're talking about the controller, we have Inno Grid controller, which has proven to be quite stable, so this is really good. Now, for some benchmarks, and uh, this is going to be quite interesting, because for AS SSD, what we got is 4,494.70 megabytes per second read, and 4,376.19 megabytes per second write. The thermals, what uh, Aida showed me, it was 28 Celsius uh, slash 41. So I think the higher thermals were 41 at the maximum. Uh, Autodisk benchmark read speeds go up to 4.86 gigabytes per second and the write speeds go up to 4.44 gigabytes per second. Again, when we're talking about the thermals, some average was 36 degrees and the maximum was 52. And then crystal disk mark read speeds actually show the maximum that this SSD can do. Read speeds go up to 5317.17 megabytes per second. Write speeds go up to 4757.55 megabytes per second. 
IOPS read 821,082 and IOPS write 72,868. The thermals were at this point 39 degrees and the maximum, this was average, and the maximum was 57. Now in addition to that I also do some um, real life testing in terms of transferring files. So 54 0.9 gigabyte file transfer read speeds 4.01 gigabytes per second while the write speeds 3.53 gigabytes per second and i also did 3d mark storage benchmark score the overall well basically um, the score with the ssd and i placed it on uh, msi pro z 790a max wi-fi with uh, intel core i7 14700k we had 3222 was the score uh, average what 3d mark shows is uh, 2204 and the best one was 22,000 something it really doesn't matter so this is what i was talking about usually what you get with full gen 4 speeds is much higher speeds but let's check this out so average bandwidth was 554.73 megabytes per second load for battlefield 5 was 939.82 megabytes per second Call of Duty Black Ops 4 660.20, Overwatch 368.02, recording the game 241.36, installing the game 333.07, saving the game was 309.28, and of course moving the game was 2847.27 megabytes. So the response time, uh, basically average access time, uh, was 56 microseconds. All in all, what I can say about this SSD is it doesn't heat up because it doesn't have full Gen 4 speeds. It won't, Gen 4 speeds at 7400 megabytes won't burn, for instance. They won't go above 70 degrees. They will be somewhere around 60 to 65 and it's still normal, but you get full grown speeds. And which is quite all right. I mean, if I aim for PCI Gen 4 SSD, I would go with 7000 megabytes per second read and write somewhere above 6000 right this is something if you desire to go with to upgrade your laptop this is something to i don't know maybe even for ps5 it can if it can support it doesn't say anything here on the box uh, because there's literally no indication about ps5 and i unfortunately don't have a ps5 to test it out for you guys but regardless of that thermals are good that's one thing Stability, consistency, that's good as well as already stated. In the Autodisk benchmark, I could actually see the consistency with, uh, I think it's 15 tests, run tests that uh, go right after another. So it kind of has the consistencies showing the same results in read and write. So there's no thermal throttling, quite logical. And I already explained that. So all in all, it's good. It's really good. It really does the job perfectly fine. I'm just not satisfied seeing Gen 4 SSDs with half speeds that aren't there. I would just like to see 7000 megabytes speeds when we're talking about PCI Gen 4. It's nothing to do with this SSD. It works, it's stable, it has lower thermals and it does, the, it does have the speeds what they stated on the box. So yeah, there's that. This is just my statement about uh, Gen 4 SSDs. In general, nothing to do with this one specifically it does perform great. That's it. If you're wanting to upgrade your laptop, PlayStation, if it can work, if the speeds are okay, this is it. I'll place the links in the description below. If you're aiming for something that you're actually looking for DRAM caching as well as SLC caching, I'll put the links uh, for the G50 Pro as well and the G70 and G70 Pro. So you can combine something with that and basically make a pick that suits you best that's it for today guys links are in the description as already stated and don't forget to subscribe hit the like button click the notification bell see you tomorrow in another one bye bye